So I want to talk to you about why your last song flopped and how to avoid it when you release another song so it doesn't happen again. And some of the stuff that you can use to breathe new life into a song so don't feel like it's totally over. But sometimes some of these things are time sensitive and if you missed it, you missed it. So the first thing why your song flopped and nobody heard it is because the, like the overall reason why is because you didn't you didn't market it. You didn't put enough effort. You thought that, you know, maybe you thought like me, uh, you know, people are just going to find it. You know, it's so good that people are just going to find it. They're just going to discover you. And it's so good. They're just going to share it like crazy. Um, but what I've realized, man, and uh, this is actually a story about my song, Edge of My Life. That song had been out for now, it came out in 2014, it's been out eight years, and it's just now blowing up. And that's because somebody took it and they put a cool video, and that ended up going viral and getting shared, and now the song has gone viral in, in China. And uh, it's already done really well in North America, but somebody else actually took it. But like, you know, you're gonna wait eight years for that to happen? No, we do not wanna do that. So here's some things, <clears throat> number one, did you email your email list about it? You were like, Chris, I don't have an email list. Well, what you should have been doing before the song came out is you should have been uh, giving it away for free, running ads to it to give it away for free before it came out, right? Yes, give away the song for free, weeks, even a month before it came out so you can build an email list of people who have raised their hands and said, I like that song. And then, the day it comes out or leading up to it, you can be like, hey guys, you got this song like early before everybody else, but now it's out and uh, you can get it here. It's on Spotify. Do me a huge favor and uh, and uh, pre-save it. And because you, uh, you know, downloaded it, I also want to give you the instrumental version or the remix version that we have now. But like, you want to start building the fan base even before it comes out. And when I tell artists this, they're like, really? Won't that screw up the release by giving the song away for free before it comes out? I'm like, bro, nobody's ever heard of you. Nobody's ever heard of you. You know, you can't screw up the release. It's not like you're Adele or Eminem or, you know, Jack Harlow or whoever it is, Drake, and, and, and it's gonna be like some leaked song. But then again, like for guys like that, they want that stuff leaked. Like the problem isn't anymore like, oh, people stealing my stuff and it getting out there before the desired date. The problem is nobody knows who you and I are. We are in obscurity. They don't know who we are. So you need to do everything you can. So you, 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 you think spending 10, 15, even $100 a day giving away your song for free to build an email list, you think that's gonna like mess up your song release? Absolutely not. If anything, it's gonna give you more impressions, more people being aware of you or even know you exist before your song drops and creating buzz around it and awareness so that by the time the song finally does drop, a lot of people can be like, hey, oh, I remember that, I remember seeing that guy's ad or that girl's ad, or they're on your email list so you've been building the relationship with them and, and now you can actually email them that the song is out or now that the music video is out, right? So you need to be promoting and marketing way before the song drops and you didn't do that. So there's your excuse about building your email list and we're just on the one thing that you can do. Let me ask you this. Did you tell all your friends, all your family members about the song? Did you email them? Did you text them? Did you Facebook message them? Did you post it on your personal and band page? Like, like did you tell all your friends? And because when I have a big release, I, I tell all my friends, like I, I make sure everybody knows. And when you're just starting out, you cannot like just be like, oh, well, I don't want to bother them or I don't want this or you, you despise small beginnings when you really want to get as much support and much help as you can. All right. Now, is it going to be weird? Like you could you could still email friends if you want to re uh reignite a campaign you could be you could still build an email list right now like who cares if the song is out start giving away the song for free start building the email list right now you could still text email all your friends about it and, and bring the awareness about it right one thing that i see a lot of artists miss and it's okay if you've missed this it's a simple one i've talked about a lot but you didn't pitch it to the spotify playlists 
okay, in your artist dashboard, your Spotify dashboard, which you can do, okay, you gotta be able to do it at least two weeks before the release comes. Um, you gotta do that at least two weeks before the release drops. Um, you didn't pitch it to the Amazon playlists, okay? And you can do that, I think, up to a few days or a week after the release with Amazon, so that's kinda cool. I have not had a ton of success with Amazon playlists from me pitching it. I have had success though by hunting down and finding out who is in charge of the playlists on Apple and Amazon and contacting because there's people that are in certain roles for playlists. Like they're in charge of the rock playlist, they're in charge of the hip hop playlist, they're in charge of the country playlist, they're in charge of the Christian playlists on Amazon at Apple, right? And you want to find out who those people are, all right? We have a song coming out this Friday. And one of the things that I'm going to be doing for this song, I don't do it for every single song, but for this song, I'm going to email a certain list of radio promoters that I've built up over the years. And I'm going to tell them about the song. And I know a lot of them are going to play the song. They're going to add the song to radio, and that's going to be a way of me getting the song out there. Have you ever made a list of your local radio stations? the small ones, the big ones, and started finding who are the PDs, who are the program directors, and hit them up, right? Like, all these things that you're doing, and, and they might sound like a lot, and there's way more than I'll probably have time to go in for this video, but when you start stacking these upon a release, and you get help, you get a brother to help, you get a sister to help, you get a family member to help, to, to, to start finding out who these people are and, and doing all these things, this starts amplifying this the potential for success of your song. So it doesn't flop, right? And the, the good thing about, if you play shows, I'm not playing shows right now, but the, the good thing about you getting involved in the, the local scene and program directors and getting played, if, you, if there's a radio station that plays your style of music, and I'm sure there is, I'm sure there's a college station, right? There's a chance that you can hopefully promote on their show when you have a live show. You can promote, the show when you when you're when you're touring and you can go do an interview and hopefully you can get put on a show or put on a festival and and growing and and this is one of the things like so so many of us because of online yeah you can reach people worldwide like i've toured china once and you know now would be the time for me to tour china not that i want to go back there um but we toured uh beijing and we did i can't remember the other city we played we played two shows there uh what was the other one ah, i can't remember it uh, Beijing, it's, it's bothering me now. Anyways, um, if I went back there now, I know I have a way bigger fan base and it's like, Hey, I grew it first online and then I went there. And that's just one of the, the biggest takeaways and things that I, I realized it's like, so for so long, I was trying to build my fan base by touring, which is one way to build it, but not by going out on your own. You'd want to do that by buying onto a tour right? Um, and uh, it, it will go with somebody who's already got the fan base and you go off their coattails. Well, if I was to go tour China, now would be the time to go. Like I'd never toured there before. We didn't do any marketing there, but we took the show. The shows weren't exactly very massive there, whatever. And, um, but it's go build it before you go there, right? And that's the real power of, of online marketing that can change your life. So what's the last thing <clears throat> that you can do to promote your song and why your song flopped and how to avoid it. Here's, here's my last tip, and that's thinking. It's thinking of a really dope post, whether it's a funny viral video, something crazy you do with your friends, your dog, your pet, something around uh, sports, something around that connects to your song that could go viral and would be a great Instagram reel. I see rock guys do it. I see hip hop guys do it. I see all genres of do it. Something, obviously you want to be on brand, but what's something crazy that you can do that would garner some attention to that song and post it as Instagram reel, post it as a TikTok that's like a 10 second whatever clip that's funny, has your music in the background and think of a bunch of these and, and do them. We did this for my song, I Run With Wolves. Uh, I, I held my dog and I went on the zip line thing and I just swung out and it did really, really well. I got thousands, thousands of more views than it normally would be. And that's by me sitting down in the car, like here, writing out, like what would be funny? Looking up some, look at some other, you know, viral videos and, and see what did good. Go follow some other, see what, see what they're doing. What can you come up with for your song? 
and keep posting about it. And this is the, this is something you can do post your song release. Like you can do this now. Like this this is what I really want to encourage you and why I shared that story about my song Edge of My Life is because all these people are making anime videos and all this stuff about it eight years later. They're finding about it now. And this is where labels kick our butts is in why they sign artists is because they know this happens. And they know the longevity of a song and they have the master ownership and they own a piece of your publishing. They're making money off you forever. And they know stuff sometimes just pops. You know, we get TV film placements from songs years later. And it's like, dang, man, glad I didn't sell my catalog like most people or a lot of artists did during COVID. Glad I kept on to my catalog and didn't go for the short term, but I played for the long term. If you want help with all this stuff, running ads, building the email list, you know, playlists, all that stuff, you just want some coaching and some help, pick yourself up a ticket um, to the next Get Your Fans five-day challenge. Um, I call it go to 10xyourfanbase.com forward slash live challenge. You can join that uh, Get More Fans challenge. Because look, if you have more fans than you did yesterday and you have more fans than you had last week, then you're growing. But if you're not getting more fans, then you're following behind because the music market continues to grow. Spotify's market share continues to grow by leaps and bounds, like 10 to 20% at least a year. So if you have 100 fans and by the end of the year you don't at least have 120 fans, that means you have not grown by what the market is growing at. And if you only have 100 fans, you should easily be able to 10x that to 1,000. Like, come on. Like, one of the last things I didn't, I didn't tell you why your song flopped is you didn't have a feature on it. And I get more into that in other videos. But like, you know, you can easily 10x your fan base by like putting a featured artist paying for it. But you'd rather spend your marketing on a, on a, on a brand new sweater for your video that nobody cares about and a watch nobody cares about. And, and, and you want to just be solo and do your own thing as opposed to partnerships. And we live in a year of partnerships and working with other people. Hope this has served you. 10xyourfanbase.com forward slash live challenge. Love you.